Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Robert Chiagulani, uh, better known as Bobby Wine, a music star turned politician, and he's the president of Uganda's National Unity Platform. He joins us from Johannesburg in South Africa. Bobby Wine, welcome to France 24. Thank you very much for having me, Mark. Six months have passed since the presidential election. You still claim that you are the elected president and not your very Museveni. However, the West has moved on. The African Union has moved on. Are you still considering yourself as the elected president or have you yourself decided to move on? There's nothing to move on from in Uganda. Uganda is still under the tight, the tight grip of a military dictatorship under General Museveni. Like you rightly put it, we went to the polls, but we went to the polls when the internet is blacked out, when uh, my entire campaign team is in incarceration. A few of them just got released uh, under a month ago, while thousands of our supporters are still in illegal detention. Um, the African Union, like you say, did not say a word. And yes, the international community, apart from a few statements, continue to be, you know, uh, silent about the atrocities that actually continue happening in Uganda. So you still consider yourself as the elected president of Uganda? Or are you now saying, OK, let's look at the future, what we can do to change the situation in your country? I am definitely the elected president of Uganda. But as it is, uh, the, general, the junta that took over our country with force of arms in 1986 is still under control of our country unconstitutionally. Of course, we have to continue fighting to ensure that the, the will of the people of Uganda is asserted. Uh, Mr. Museveni, uh, whom I interviewed uh, last week, uh, said he was never uh, scared of your uh, challenge, uh, despite uh, the fact that uh, you seem to worry his regime. Do you think he was scared of you? <laughs> uh, I must say that General Museveni is scared not just of me, but of the generation, of the thousands and thousands of Ugandans that are yearning for change, and not only yearning for change uh, silently, but are up to demand for what's rightfully theirs. He is scared because he has kept people um, ignorant for a long time until when our generation woke up uh, all at once. We must remember that Uganda is a country that has over 80% of citizens that have never seen another president, because General Museveni has been president for 35 years. So, yes, he is scared of our generation, and rightly so. He did say in the interview uh, with me last week that he was open to dialogue with you as with the entire opposition. What is your response to this open hand? Well, General Museveni is being the hypocrite that he has always been. We must remember that he is the same person that has been uh, woodwinking. Uh, people with dialogue. It should be remembered right from the 80s in Nairobi. But again, to show the world that he does not believe in dialogue, his approach to dialogue has been either coercion or co-optation, but not real dialogue. Uh, we cannot talk about dialogue when the people are still being abducted. We cannot talk about dialogue when we don't have any rights to express ourselves. We cannot talk about dialogue when we are not free. It's only free people that discuss not when one is being under coercion and the other is asking for dialogue. But uh, you yourself are now free. You mentioned at the onset of the interview that uh, several of your supporters uh, were freed. Isn't this the sign that the regime might be willing to have a dialogue in the terms you just spelled out? Well, I said a few of our supporters are freed. But again, I must really assert it that this, the, the dialogue if dialogue is to be meaningful, it should be for and on behalf of the people of Uganda. No dialogue between two individuals. Ugandans went to the polls on the 14th of January and they asserted their voices. And their voices have been usurped. So it is not just a matter of me and General Museveni. It's a matter of the people of Uganda, which must be public and transparent, not a co-optation or dialogue like General Museveni's approach has always been. The um, situation uh, back in November uh, turned pretty violent. Over 50 people uh, were killed. Uh, Mr. Museveni promised that there would be a, a probe, that it would be made public, and he told me uh, that it should be made public and that 
The culprits should be prosecutor. Do you believe him? Well, I must say it's not the first time that people are being massacred under the orders of General Museveni. He came out and bragged and pounded his chest about the murder, the mass murder of Ugandans. And it must be remembered that all that mass murder and abductions are being done under the command of his son, General uh, Mohose Kenerugaba, who is effectively in charge of the military. So it is rather hypocritical for General Museveni to order for the mass murder of the people, come out and publicly uh, assert it on public TV that it is under the command of his son and congratulate the military for the mass murder of those people and then later on comes out to say that people will be uh, prosecuted. It has been over six months. The people that murdered Ugandans are known, and this is not the only uh, uh, situ the, the only time that it has happened. My driver was murdered by the elite forces who were under the command of General Museveni's son. The people that killed my driver are known. They were not prosecuted. A renowned boxer called Zebra Senyange was killed by Museveni's soldiers, and he came out and owned that. None of them has been uh, prosecuted. So he's lying so when he said there will be accountability? He's definitely lying, and, uh, you know, it would be funny if it's not sad to hear the same person say one thing uh, today and say another thing tomorrow. You mentioned uh, his son. Do you think that he's grooming him to be his successor, that he wants Uganda to become a dynasty? Well, it's almost clear. I mean, General Museveni is somebody that has never stood with his word. But his actions are clear. His actions are clear. He's the same person that said he will not rule after the age of 75. At 75, he still has no hope or no sign of relinquishing power. He's the same person that said in 1986 that Africa's problem in general and Uganda in particular are leaders that overstay in power. 35 years later, he doesn't want to be reminded of what he said. So there's no reason to believe anything that he says. It's only reason to watch his actions and to discern for ourselves as Ugandans. Right. Uh, what he has done is to welcome Afghan refugees. Uh, this was at the behest of the U.S. administration. Uh, he says it's for purely humanitarian reasons. Is this your reading of this situation? Well, while it is our culture in Uganda to be humanitarian and to welcome refugees way back in our history, I must say this is clearly for political reasons. Why? Because we have Ugandans in their hundreds that are stuck in Afghanistan. There has not been any policy of repatriating them back home or even considering them. And not only that, Ugandans have been stuck in various countries during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, and they've not been thought about. So we have every reason to believe that General Museveni is trying to cleans his name and get in good books with the United States and the international community, of course, at the cost of Ugandans. He also uh, criticized on uh, national television the security forces for their use of violence, even uh, torture. Isn't this a good thing? But like I said, the General Museveni is only being hypocritical. He has on numerous times come out to congratulate those that murder Ugandans. He has ordered for the abduction and murder of Ugandans. Now, to have him come out all of a sudden to denounce them, he's certainly trying to cleanse his already soiled international image. Right. Uh, how do you see uh, him ending? I mean, do you see an end like, let's say, Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe, Omar al-Bashir in Sudan, that is, being ousted by a popular uprisings, or uh, because maybe he has a military background, do you see uh, him uh, hanging on for uh, many years? Well, it's clear. Recent history shows us how all dictators that have operated and behaved like General Museveni end up. We see it from the likes of Gaddafi, the likes of Omar el-Bashir, the likes of uh, Mugabe, etc., uh, etc. Et so there is no difference. It will certainly end the same way. Uh, General Museveni has shown us the same trajectory of all the dictators that 
uh, come in the name of revolutionaries but descend into despised despots who abuse rights with impunity but ultimately they end up in the dustbin of history. So we can almost be sure that it's just a matter of time for General Museveni to end up in the dustbin of history like all the tyrants that have come before him. Right. Uh, so this begs the question. You tried uh, the ballot box. You claim uh, that uh, it was a fraudulent election. Uh, are you advocating now a popular uprising uh, to unseat President Museveni because uh, you believe this is the only avenue uh, to uh, push him out? I advocate for every legal, every constitutional and every moral option especially if it's non-violent, to get rid of a dictatorship in Uganda and everywhere in the world. It has been done in many other African countries, and it certainly can and will be done in Uganda. We have said it before and we say it again that now it is in the uh, interest and indeed the responsibility of the people of Uganda to rise to the occasion and liberate themselves because there is nothing anymore to be expected from a tyrant like Museveni other than constant abuse of uh, the constitution, constant abuse of human rights. It should be remembered that just like uh, Alpha Conde, just like uh, many other dictators all over the world, General Museveni has changed the constitution multiple times in order to facilitate his continued stay in power. But like I said, it always ends up um, in unhappy endings. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, you don't expect him to serve his full mandate? General Museveni has only done um, what other dictators do, focus on his continued hold on power, and all this comes to the detriment of the citizens of Uganda. Bobby Wine, I want to thank you very much uh, for being our guest here on the France 24 interview. Thank you for watching it and stay tuned for more news.